Welcome to the Auburn Medical Group YouTube live stream. The entertaining medical live stream where viewers can ask real-time questions of real medical doctors. And here are our hosts, Dr. Mark Vaughn and Dr. Gwen Vaughn. And it's the show. Dr. Queen does not know the title of the show. I, I still don't. You can I be mean, watching this on you YouTube. You know more than I do right and now. And he doesn't know that we've been keeping a secret. We're going in blind. We also have a secret off-screen guest studio in the studio. Audience. Do you, here, I'll, I'll turn on your mic so you can talk. Do, do you want to use a, a pseudonym for you? Um, I'm fine with my first name. I don't need a pseudonym. I think oh. I'm fine. Okay, so this is Samuel. Can I say what you're here for? Yeah. He's interviewing to be a nurse practitioner in our office, but but he doesn't want to be on camera today. Maybe in the future, which is okay. Okay, so he'll be. You just throw in comments whenever it's appropriate. You, you say you know whatever it is you think about whatever we're talking about. You're you're, you're on that's the mic. No no talk. no pressure. Right, sounds great. <laughs> and and please welcome Samuel to the show. Those of you who are using the chat because this is a live program. I'll, I'll be telling you in a moment what our, our topic is, but of course you can read it if you, but there's some things we have to get out of the way here first. Uh, first of all, this is a live stream. So there will be people chatting in with comments and questions like Lizzie, who's, who's asking. Lizzie. Lizzie. It's Lizzie. Lizzie, who's asking, what is the topic? You and me both, Lizzie. <laughs> okay. This who is where we announce the topic. Who knows? What are we talking about? To do you want to say it? So the topic we discussed today um, that the oh, show will be going over is going to be uh, GERD. So G-E-R-D. Oh, okay. I, I got what, this. What is... <laughs> it's like sweating all the way nope. until, <laughs> until nope. now. No prep at all. I got this. He's totally got, got it. This. He's ready to go with it. Okay. We see it. Yeah. So uh, Often enough we have other comments from people. We have Robert Antonio saying, welcome, Samuel. So you do have hey, a welcome from Thank you so much. Audience. Robert Antonio. <laughs> Lizzie, uh, whoops, what is GERD? Okay, LOL. Lots of love to you two. Hey. And then Pamela Klein says, welcome, Samuel. We'll probably, These guys are great. I guess we'll probably answer that. And, what and is GERD? She's got her picture and her favorite radio station, 98.9. Because I know it's maybe not Maybe that's her, her temperature. May, oh, okay. Maybe that's what Hawaii Life says. <laughs> is vertigo a symptom of GERD? We'll, we'll get to that. Hmm. And Lizzie, again, giving us a lot of emojis. Gert is a broad subject, so all right. We're going to cover it all. Okay. We got this. I thought you were saying something else there for a moment about one of our commenters, but we, we'll move on. So Gerd, Gerd. What's, what, what's this? Samuel. What, we're going to oh. pimp the student. <laughs> Put what, you on. <laughs> what does Gerd stand for? So GERD is going to stand for gastroesophageal reflux disease. All yes. Right. Yes, that is correct. A plus. Yeah. Thank you. Gold star. Five five stars. All right. On on the review. Okay, so that is gastroesophageal reflux disease. We'll break that down. Gastro stomach, esophageal stomach, reflux, stuff. Wait, wait. Stuff going backwards or going back the way it came. Going the wrong reflux direction. Reflux disease. It is a disorder of the body. It's not the way it normally works. Yes. So that that's a very descriptive title of those those four letters g e r d mm -hmm. so what what is it that's coming back up what what is coming from the stomach to the esophagus mm -hmm. yeah stomach maybe, contents uh essentially yeah, what's, what's in there so so typically uh normal you go down you have this nice little sphincter at the bottom of your esophagus that um isolates the esophagus from the stomach and in the stomach is where there's a lot of acid production um, and, and acid is used inside the stomach to break a lot of your foods down. It is an, an important step in the process of digestion. Uh, and, and it does this like, you know, churning to kind of move things around, break them down that way, both um, mechanically and acidically. Um, so, so it's doing that. Um, and then it's supposed to go the opposite direction and do our duodenum, duodenum and small intestine, but... Duodenum. <laughs> depending on where you come from, how you pronounce that. Uh, but sometimes it's it can go umbilicus. in the reverse <laughs> reverse, <laughs> reverse and, and go back up into the, to the esophagus. Now, the stomach has this nice protective lining, um, kind of a mucus lining that allows it to not be um, hurt by the acid, which is kind of nice. Should I take this oh, hey, out? look at that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. so um, that that's protects the stomach. If that breaks down, you can get get peptic ulcer disease. There's a stomach right. Oh, you can open it? 
Oh, look at that. You got the rugae, these little folds within the stomach. So all of that is protected. But if, if that breaks down, you can get problems within the stomach like peptic ulcer disease ulcerations. Um, but the esophagus does not have that protective lining. And, it, and if acid goes the wrong way and back up into there, into your esophagus, it can be painful and give you the symptom of heartburn, uh, sometimes full oh. regurgitation, that acidic taste in the back of the mouth. Uh, maybe some people have, have felt that before. Brash, acidic so, brash. Yeah. So, yeah. cough sometimes can be a symptom of that. Uh, dysphagia. Clearing the throat a lot, um, lots of mucus, mucus production. Yeah. 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 Which is unpleasant. So. so, yeah, that was really good. Thank you, Dr. Gwayne. Look at that, off the cuff. Okay. <laughs> See, <laughs> so, I told you. It's you didn't almost know like the I talked about that with a patient earlier today. <laughs> Okay. I did. <laughs> Let me see what our our, our our chat is giving us here. We have um, Lizzie with, with the, uh, I was saying with emojis or whatever, but actually she's letting us know that the sunflower is part of her name. It's the Lizzie sunflower. So she's oh. not making a sunflower emoji every time she makes a comment. That's her oh. name. <laughs> Thank you for explaining. Now we know. Lizzie, <laughs> Lizzie sunflower. So now that we've discussed GERD reflux disease and that increased exposure to acid or increased production, mm -hmm. how do we address it once it's there? Um, so first, we want to try to reduce the, the acid, um, if we can, with non-medical intervention. Now, typically, people have tried this already at home, so by the time they get to the office, we're, we're thinking about medications. But things you can do at home before you see your doctor is first, what you're eating can um, Produce more acid, so um, more spicy foods, more acidic foods can you make a little can make you a little more susceptible. But um, doesn't applesauce down. or apple vinegar cure everything? Of course. <laughs> the funny thing is, vinegar is acid have, for those yeah, of you yeah, who yeah. don't know. The funny thing is, I've had people come in and say, "Oh, I've taken apple cider vinegar for my reflux." <laughs> You're adding acid to the anyways because because it's natural. Because it's and natural. It yeah, everything it's and it's stabilizing it's an old couple the, on the acid. Label. <laughs> It's an old couple on the label. They look healthy. Mom and pop. And, and everybody in my church said to take it. Yeah. Well, don't try those. You should only take essential oils. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, uh, Anyways, so that's one thing. Another thing is not drinking too much alcohol. If you smoke, stopping smoking. Please. Uh, not, not drinking too late in the evening. Um, elevating the head of your bed because laying down. Alcohol, caffeine um, are not Caffeine favorable. not later in the day, um, yeah. which includes coffee. Well, for other reasons, you probably shouldn't take coffee late in the day. So check that one Do off that, my Samuel. list, which I already did today. <laughs> yeah, Guilty. you are contributing to his delinquency. Oh, yeah, yeah I blame Dr. Vaughn for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I, we both had a nice I, cold brew early I, before we came in. So. I am remiss. Look who actually commented. Hey, <laughs> it's Heather. Heather, she's commenting. <laughs> Appreciate. Okay, Heather. Uh, Thank you for I don't, watching. Are, are you okay with us saying she's, your role? She's already heard all of this I, earlier I don't know today when we discussed role. it. But hey, maybe you'll learn something new. I don't and know if, if we're allowed to. So, so if if you want us to say who you are, you have to put it in the chat. You're but Heather McDonald. Thank you, Heather, for commenting, even though it's just a smiley <laughs> you've been, face. You've been immortalized on YouTube. Yes, that's right. Yeah, we, we made sure yeah. that we got her in there. Okay. So those are the so, non- Mary Ann says, I, I suffers from GERD for yeah, many is. miserable years. I had a hiatal hernia. Once it was repaired, I am GERD free. Hey. I lived on antacids yeah. for way too oh, long. Oh, man. Yeah. We need to talk about antacids, don't we? And maybe a little bit about hiatal hernias and what that is. Sure. Why yeah, that let's contributes go over that. to Where'd our GERD. stomach go? You, you threw it around. No, somewhere. that's, oh, that's, that's a, the liver that fell down. That's the liver. Here's the stomach. Can we show a hiatal hernia with the stomach? Uh, can you? That's kind of tricky. Yeah. If we had a really good zoom in camera, we I mean, could probably do it, but we don't really have that. So, this is, it's kind of, anyways. So, yeah. Anyways, a hiatal hernia is when part of the stomach where the, um, this part. the esophagus, this it part. turns into the esophagus, goes up through that the part. diaphragm. The diaphragm is that, that big, the big muscles across the lower abdomen there. Goes up through. So, part of your stomach's actually up through that diaphragm. And then that essentially does not give you that um, uh, assistance on the sphincter to keep it closed. And it's much more I easier. Sphincter. I said sphincter. A sphincter says what? Okay. Anyways, the uh, 
part of that acid, it's much more easier for that to get up into... Samuel didn't fall the, for it. The esophagus. A sphincter says what? Esophagus. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so that's what a hiatal hernia does. It, it, it makes um, that, that reflux world? much more. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> totally lost. Excuse me. So let me, let me get my anyway, stomach that's on the ground. If, if the barrier is not working, the acid gets up there. Yes, so that's hiatal hernia. Yeah. Um, what and, was the other thing? And they that, can be uh, fixed with they procedures. They can, yeah, yeah. Um, Amazingly, sometimes a, without opening up the, yeah, uh, it's pretty, the skin of the abdomen. Amazing. They do it through a scope sometimes. It's, yeah. The coolest. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that can contribute. Um, she talks about antacids. Maybe we should talk a little bit about that, or do you want to? Antacids versus things that block acid production, because sure. many people will yeah, purchase to over the counter products like Prilosec, Nexium, Prevacid, um, or the H2 blockers. Like now, about all we have available is uh, Pepsid, Pepsid, Modidine. Um, those aren't actually antacids. Right. Yeah, yeah. So um, antacids would be like Rolaids or Tums, where, where you pop those as you're getting the acid in the when esophagus. When you feel the symptom. And it is just a base. It is sodium bicarbonate, no, it's magnesium a buffer. bicarbonate. Buffer. It's, a, it's a buffer, yeah. So right. it combines with that acid to... Weak base. Yeah, yeah weak base. Uh, to neutralize that acid. Yeah. Um, and so you take away the pain because you don't have the that harsh acidic... Uh, yes. Harsh acid in, this, in the... Uh, so when the you're having the heartburn, you want to take an antacid. When it's Tum, happening. Tums, Rolaids... Uh, Mylanta. Mylanta, Gaviscon... Uh, that's like a so, combo one, yeah. So these are the things that have been around since before the 80s when the H2 blockers like famotidine or Pepsid came out uh, that work and right Zantac. then. Zantac that we don't see anymore. Yeah, and that had a... Got taken uh, off the market. So, so we used to see uh, those, the original one was Tagamet, and then Zantac, right. and then Famotidine or Pepsid. Now all you find is Pepsid, and and then after those came the really strong acid blockers like PPIs, as they're called, Omeprazole slash uh, Esomeprazole. Yeah, the newer version. I was going to say is the same as Prilosec. Uh, Prevacid. Uh, yeah, Pantoprazole. Can't come up. There you go. So they, they all have protonics. these names. The, these medicines actually stop the production of the acid. Yeah, they, they literally like shut off that Turn acid. Turn off the valve. Acid so the production. Famotidine and the other H2 blockers would stop the stimulation from histamine. That's why I called H2 blockers. Histamine, two uh, receptors on the cells. Different than. It right. would stop them from stimulating the production of acid. But even though the histamine was not stimulating the production of the acid, it was still happening. Whereas the really strong PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, like omeprazole, prilosec, nexium, esomeprazole, pantoprazole, those would actually completely stop the acid production yeah. in the stomach. They work exceedingly well <laughs> um, to the point where you're not making any acid. Yeah. So if you ever had even heartburn once in your life, you're never going to get it again. Um, because you're not making any acid. And so people, typically the story went, we used to put everybody who goes into the hospital on these PPIs. You remember this? Used to. Um, so they and, wouldn't get And then they ulcers. wouldn't, yeah, because so they wouldn't get stress ulcers when they're in their stress, stressful hospitalization. So people would be in the hospital and take this medication and not get their heartburn, come out and then be on this medication and just stay on it. Which we now know is not a good thing. Don't want to be on it A little term. bit of acid is actually a good thing yeah. um, to help with digestion and other things. And we have that problem even in primary care outpatient practices where people will be put on this medicine yeah. intended to be temporary, but then they get the refill requests <laughs> because their medicine it ran comes out in and, and the yeah, patient doesn't very remember easy this to was click temporary that, that button and, and, and it just keeps getting that. renewed and renewed yeah. and renewed. So if you're taking one of those medicines and you haven't been scoped by a gastroenterologist or somebody else, another specialist, and told you need to stay on this medicine. Don't stop taking this medicine. Talk to your doctor about hey, am Possibly I supposed to be stopping that, taking yeah. this long term? Yeah, yeah. Because you may need to stop it and check. Yeah. It yeah. should be just for short term unless you've there been checked out. A few conditions, yeah, where it is yeah. required to take long term. Yeah. So yeah. it's not meant to be on your own, continued along, and and oftentimes not continued even when it was prescribed because it may have been prescribed for short term. For short term, but continued. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's let's catch up on comments because man, are we let's getting comments? That. 
We are popular on the YouTubes. Wow, look at this. They look like the girds. Oh, oh, look, Cindy. Uh, Cindy Bunn says, does sleeping on your left side help with acid? Oh, that's an interesting question. Sleeping on your left side, does it help with acid reflux? I've never recommended that. Uh, and I've never heard or seen any recommendations I would actually for expect that. left side to be worse. <laughs> because your stomach's going to drain toward the right. Well, yeah, you would be sleeping on your right side, then it would go up. So if zone. this is your stomach in you, and you're sleeping on this side, it's... Your stomach kind of takes a, a left-hand turn, esophagus. but then it takes a right-hand turn. So if sleeping you sleep on your, on your right side, it might help for drainage of the stomach. Yeah. I would, if, if, if either of them was better than the other, I would expect sleeping on the right to be the one that would be the better of the two. But we don't make that recommendation. We just say elevate the head of the bed. <laughs> Lizzie says... Because that's what's been proven to help. I don't deal with GERD. Oh, you're can so... Can we ask other medical questions? Moving you're on. You're so lucky. Heather says, well, sure. Oh, we, Heather. Okay. We talk about Heather is other our... things at other times. I was, I was answering her thing. I was saying, yeah, we can answer other questions. I was ignoring May, you. Give us a great topic for next week and we'll talk about it. Yes, thank you. And Heather McDonald says, sure, answering my question, can we tell can who we you are? talk about her? Heather is our... Student we don't talk PA about PA currently no. rotating on no. in our office, and she's awesome. Um, we, we're trying to hire she, her. She has been great. Uh, just like Samuel, we're trying to hire <laughs> because we have lots of patients. You heard my patient, like my really loud patient, as he was like, she, we were coming out of the room. He's like, you need to hire her. <laughs> you see, like, I'm pretty sure the whole office heard. <laughs> we try. <laughs> uh, I'm suffering from, this is, who is this? This is Hawaii life. I'm suffering from GERD, and it's been years now. Ooh, Mine okay. started after my gallbladder was removed. Oh, interesting. Do you have some explanation for that, Smarty Pants? No, you can do it. Go for it. I don't have an explanation for that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know. I was trying to say, okay, maybe you know something I don't. So uh, Lizzie is trying to spell Zantac, as you can see. Zantac. Do we do it with an X a... or a Z? X or it's Z? A, it's a Z. Which is it? Yeah. It's with a Z. Xanax okay. is with an X. <laughs> Maybe Zantac. That's don't get those two mixed up. Linda Moore is talking <laughs> don't, about a Don't take the Xanax when you're supposed to take the Zantac. Lizzie says that's a great question, Cindy. Um, oh, that was the left to right side. Uh, I love the head of your bed. Uh, Lizzie. Oh, when was Zantac taken off the market and why? I was prescribed it a few years ago. Okay, I'm trying to think back to... So it was only the name happened? brand Zantac. Uh, and it was taken off the market for some contamination, like they usually are. I like happens what so it, often. I forget with what it was. Generics from foreign countries. Yeah, but the prescription one, it looks like you was still going. The prescription generic were still going for a while there. It was the yeah. Do, there was something weird. Can we prescribe it now? I think so. Yeah, I've gone back to Zantac occasionally. I don't know. I Pepsi has become so easy for I was me to say, do now. Anybody can have Motadine so. and. So that's kind of what I've deferred to yeah. for the most part. Okay. And then Lizzie said, Lizzie's just saying, giving all the names. <laughs> Prilosec. Thanks. Uh, Miriam, I Give also took names. Prilosec for years. Thank you for the explanation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mary M says, but I got stomach problems. And then Cindy, eating small meals helps too. Yes, Cindy. Thank you for pointing that out. That is another yes. part of it. We didn't not mention that one. Not eating too late, not eating too much, not eating the wrong A very things. full stomach will. That food's got to go somewhere. That's right. That's right. Hawaii Life also uh, asking, what are the symptoms of GERD? Um, well, you could either rewind the show or we could say them again. Yeah. Uh, reflex, acid brash, uh, cough, heartburn, heartburn uh, abdominal pain, bloating, gas. Chronic cough. Either end, but more so the upper. Yep. Uh, what else did you not say? Better out than in, I always say. That's what? Another Mike Myers. Yeah, what's his name? I think it's uh, I think uh, we hit them all there. Mm, yeah. I just wondered about Zantac because it was for extreme nausea. Yeah, a nausea would also be uh, a symptom. That, that can be a symptom of reflux. Okay. Lizzie's saying, but it didn't help. Or and excessive Heather, acid. Heather McDonald, what's the difference between GERD and babies and normal reflux? Oh, oh, nice question, student. I'll give that to the guy who sees more peds. Yeah. So um, GERD in babies is when it... Um, is more than just the spitting up. Babies spit up. They babies they don't know anything. They just keep eating. You keep feeding they don't them. Know anything. They don't know when to stop. They don't know anything. So so their stomach will get full, and and some of that often will come up with burping. You know where you're told to you know kind of pat them, and, and some of that will come up. That's normal. 
uh, acid reflux in babies is different. It is a uh, when acid actually gets in there, not and um, it starts to cause them pain. And you know this. They have um, oh, there's a name for the sign where the babies start arching their back because that's the only way babies know how to. Uh, term for that. You know it. I don't know it specific oh, term for man. that. Oh man, uh, do you know it? It's not coming to me. Somebody's um, sign? It's somebody's name. Yeah, some guy's name. But anyways, babies will arch their back because that's how babies feel like they're trying to deal with the pain. So you see this, especially at night when they're laying down, they, they will arch their back. Um, and they'll they'll just be inconsolable. These babies are, are in pain. So uh, it's pretty rare. Um, you know, you can do all the things to start to help out with that. Smaller feedings is kind of the big one, elevating the head of it. All the things that we do for adults, you can do for babies, essentially. Um Maybe not not all, but um, yeah, maybe not the decreased alcohol, alcohol thing. But <laughs> well, I, I hope they're not giving alcohol. No, baby. no, no, no. Um, uh, but yeah, they, that that's kind of the difference when there is actual distress in the baby. That's the biggest, the easiest okay. way to know that there's. And so, do we find uh, it? I was going to try to. When, when I was there. in medical school, um, putting babies like newborns on Zantac was the fad. Yeah, uh, we try to avoid it now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this was before uh, PPI. So it was Zantac and all these babies in the children's hospital. Um, and it wasn't just for anybody who, who spit up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, the, these were hospitalized babies, not the babies at home. Uh, I, I didn't see it being done on an outpatient basis. Uh, I saw it being done on patients that were hospitalized. Yeah. So I'm not what is it you're looking mm-hmm. up? I was trying the, to find the, the name, name of, the of that. Yeah, of the, yeah, the baby's the baby sign. Right. There's a name for it. I can't. Is somebody commenting can't in on find it? it? Colic. Lizzie asks us if, if, it, if it's colic. I bet Heather knows it. Or if it's underdeveloped babies. I bet. I, I know, know Heather knows it. <laughs> Sandifer syndrome. Uh, syndrome. Well, that does not sound correct. But that that is something I'm sure I'd have to look that one up. You, you, don't, you, you don't trust Heather to have it. We'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll talk about it tomorrow. When you get in, <laughs> 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, that is the subject. Okay. Thank you, Heather, by the way. So any other thoughts or comments, either from Samuel or from Dr. Gwaine? I don't know. Did we go over? Oh, um, maybe the biggest thing to know is when to get an EG scope. When? Um, well, if you're not getting better or if you need to take a, um, one of those PPIs for more than, for more than one month, yeah. four, four if, weeks. If you stop taking it and it. your symptoms come right back. Yeah, we need to we need, we need to go look at need to go. Actually, not us. It'd be the guys. We refer all. Yeah, yeah. And the GI guys yeah. do it. Okay. Yeah. Very good. So that's GERD or G R D or there it is. How to do gastroesophageal? That was reflux. off the cuff. That yeah, you didn't even know what you're walking into, <laughs> man. You just <laughs> you just uh, did the whole. I was just here watching. He just did the whole yeah, show. Right. Sure. So I picked the topic. Actually, did. <laughs> Somebody picked the topic. It, uh, did you pick it? No, I think it was actually Heather. That Heather mentioned. picked the topic. Uh, well, yeah, and Heather was able to come through. Oh, Hopefully wait. I answered oh, wait. all Le- your questions. Leanne has a question. Leanne says Heather has a question. This is a different Heather. Uh, this is not the student Heather. Uh, she says left-sided sleeping is better. And Justin, Ju- Justin agrees. Justin agrees. There you go. So Justin's another one of our PAs. Our PA Left-sided. Um does I any, was thinking stomach turns to the left, so, so to keep it from going up and yeah, sure. I okay. Turn to the left to keep it. This in the stomach? is not a good representation of the stomach because it's actually so kind of like not this, fun to and it's supposed to be like that. So it's not. It's not a good representation. So we're we're, we're, we're the going stomach on the turns left to, to the left. So if you're sleeping on the left, it's going to pull on that side, so not go up into the stomach. Okay. I can see that under, and understand it. Okay. Should I, Strong yeah. work, Justin. Let, let's I hold agree. it. Let, let, Let's go with that. <laughs> okay. So, Samuel, thank you for joining us. And until next time, yeah, we have Samuel, I'm Dr. Gwen Vaughn, Dr. Mark Vaughn, telling you to stay in good health. Doctors, thank you for another informative session. Auburn Medical Group is located in Auburn, California, USA. Thank you for participating. Please tell a friend and join us again next week.